thanks, Lindsay. Um, and thanks to all the organizers. This is really incredible. Um, I think it's going to be a, a template for future meetings um, beyond uh, dopamine. So it's really exciting. Um, thanks, everyone, for all the effort they put into this, and especially in the context of the recent pandemic shutdown. So we're all really excited about this opportunity. Um, so I'm here to um, introduce the first speaker, Dr. Nao Yuchida, a professor of cellular and molecular biology at Harvard University. He will be talking about dissociating reward prediction error and value in dopamine signals. And so now you'll have 20 minutes for your talk, and then we will go to a 10 minute question period. So everyone in attendance, you can put your questions into the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window. Um, and okay, now you can go ahead and share your screen and begin your talk whenever you're ready. Thanks. Uh, can you allow me to share the screen? It's not working now. Okay, can you see my slide? Okay. Yes. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all the organizers for um, their amazing job of putting together this wonderful meeting. And this is an exciting time for studying dopamine. Monitoring the activity of dopamine neurons has become easier than before. And many experimental data have been produced by many labs in, rap in a rapid pace. It is really a timely meeting, and I look forward to upcoming presentations and discussions. One of the most influential ideas in the field is that dopamine neuron signal reward prediction errors, or the difference between actual and predicted reward. Although many experiments support this idea, now increasing evidence also shows that uh, dopamine neurons are more diverse than uh, originally thought. For example, some dopamine neurons are activated by aversive stimuli or threat. These dopamine neurons tend to project to specific targets forming aversive hotspots as overviewed in this review by Stefan Lamel. Our group has shown that dopamine neurons projecting to the tail of the striatum project uh, uh, signal threat prediction errors. Despite these novel findings, Still, many dopamine neurons appear to signal reward prediction errors. A large body of evidence supports that dopamine neurons located in the ventral tegmental area projecting to the uh, uh, nucleus accumbens predominantly signal reward prediction errors, particularly in rodents. However, in this system, the nature of, uh, even in, in this system, the nature of dopamine system uh, signals uh, remains hotly debated. One important issue is the dopamine run, as observed in many examples, like here, uh, or here, or here. A dopamine ramps have been observed in multiple experiments, such as rats approaching and pressing a lever to obtain different rewards, like cocaine or sucrose, or rats performing a sequence of actions to obtain reward. Dopamine ramps are observed also in navigational contexts performing auditory discrimination or evidence accumulation. Or dopamine ramps have been also observed in a simpler uh, decision-making paradigm uh, using nose pokes. Dopamine, uh, most of these studies used as, uh, cyclic voltammetry in the nucleus accumbens that measures dopamine concentration. Yet, uh, dopamine ramps are also observed uh, in single cell calcium signals in the VTA. These ex examples show that dopamine ramps are, uh, at the time scale of seconds can occur in various experimental conditions, which often involve approach to reward locations or an instrumental responding to obtain reward. Dopamine ramps have been proposed to signal the proximity to reward or correlated with position. And dopamine ramps may encode state value or motivational value, which I will explain later. It was also proposed that, uh, uh, that uh, slow dopamine signals, including dopamine ramps, are generated at dopamine axons independent of spiking activity at SOMA. 
There have been some theoretical attempts to explain dopamine ramps as reward prediction errors, but the nature of ramping dopamine signals remains unclear. There were some jargons in the previous slide, and let me first clarify some basic concepts. In reinforcement learning, the value of, of the state or state values is defined as, uh, as the discounted sum of all future rewards starting from that state. Uh, there are uh, uh, the, the, the animal transitions uh, across different states at time t, t plus one, t plus two, and so on. It receives reward at, uh, at these uh, transitions, uh, these R of t. So state value is the sum of all of these future rewards uh, multiplied by a discounting factor gamma to emphasize the recent reward and discount uh, distant reward. Observing this equation, this part is exactly uh, gamma times V of T plus one. So this equation can be simplified like fo the following. And this equation should hold true if the prediction is accurate. But if the current prediction is uh, still being learned, uh, th uh, this might not hold true. The difference between the right-hand side and left-hand side may represent uh, the inconsistency uh, or error in the predictions. So a, a prediction error can be defined as the difference between the left-hand side and right-hand side. And this is uh, indeed how the temporal difference error is defined. Uh, this is called temporal difference error because it uses the difference of values between consecutive time point uh, between t plus one and T. Here is an intuitive way to understand TD errors. In a simple classical conditioning paradigm, when the cue is presented, value goes up because now the animal knows that the reward is coming in the future. When the time passes beyond the time of reward, value goes down because the animal doesn't know when the next reward is going to come. The V of T plus one is just a temporary shifted version of V of T plus T. Therefore, the subtracting between the two will give this transient excitation or uh, uh, transient inhibition uh, when the value goes up or down. And gamma is typically uh, close to one. So this is approximately the derivative of the value function. Now, when reward comes, these two cancel cancel out. And uh, co the, therefore, the combining these three terms approximates the dopamine response, explaining the Q-evoked response, the reduction of the reward response when the reward is predicted, and the dip of uh, uh, activity when reward is omitted. The important point for this talk is that the TD error is roughly the derivative of value. The TD errors are value, uh, TD errors and values are related, but different in a fundamental way. Building on this framework, Hamid et al. proposed that dopamine ramps correspond to the state value or V of T. In these tasks, reward comes uh, typically at the, uh, near the end of the, a trial. The value is maximum just before the reward and goes down backward in time with a fixed uh, rate gamma. In this case, the value follows an exponential decay function indicated by the gray line. Hamid et al. proposed that these ramping signals corresponds to this value function indicated here. To put, put this into a context, the value function here corresponds to the, this part of the previous example. Therefore, their proposal uh, pro uh, meant that uh, dopamine neuron signal uh, values in some cases and in, uh, TD error in others. So in this study, we wanted to address the following questions. What do dopamine ramps mean after all? Is it value or reward prediction errors? And under what conditions uh, dopamine ramp occurs? The considering the derivative-like property of TD errors, some Gershman pointed out that the shape of the value function matters. In the value, if the value function is an exponential decay function, 
compute in TD error uh, using this value function results in zero TD error. What if the value function takes a different uh, shape? For example, if the value function is a more, more convex than con exponential decay function, computing TD error using this value function results in a positive or even uh, ramping up TD error. Therefore, just by observing a dopamine ramp, it is unclear whether we are looking at a value function or TD error uh, that is the result of the derivative of a sufficiently convex value function. So a dopamine ramp can occur regardless of whether dopamine res, uh, represents RPE or state value. We therefore th sought to develop a set of experiments to separate these two possibilities. We wanted to do so with less assumptions, basing on the original definition of TD errors, and more specifically, the derivative-like property. Imagine that a mouse moves in a linear track to obtain a reward. What if the mouse is suddenly teleported to a new location? And let's assume that there is a monotonically increasing value function. The mouse, uh, at the, uh, uh, after teleport, the mouse moves from here to here, and the value will increase suddenly. This results in a step-like increase in value, as shown here. In contrast, Teleport will cause a transient response in TD error because it is the derivative. Another important prediction is that the value should always maximum at the goal location because there will, there, there will be no more delay to reward at this point. And this does not need, uh, have to be the case for TD error and the PP can exceed uh, the uh, maximum of the standard condition. Uh, this manipulation therefore makes uh, qualitatively distinct predictions for value and TD error. Another illuminating experiment is a speed manipulation. If TD error is the temporal derivative of value, it should be sensitive to the speed of the movement. Fast speed will result in a greater magnitude of ramp and slow speed will uh, result in a smaller uh, magnitude of ramp. So, so the, uh, uh, if it's a temp temporal difference error, the magnitude of the, of the response should be dependent, of, of, uh, dependent on the speed of the scene movement. In contrast, the value should end at the same uh, level, regardless of the speed, because at the goal, now the animal is about to get the same reward with no more delay. It is important that uh, this speed second uh, experiment, speed manipulation tests uh, whether the ramp itself has the property of value or uh, the, the derivative of it. To conduct these experiments, we used a virtual reality in head fixed mouse. The mice were presented with a, the, uh, the scene passively and received the reward at the final location around here. We first measured the activity of dopamine neurons using fiber fluorometry or photometry. Uh, 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 calcium indicator GCAN6 was uh, expressed in dopamine neurons and axonal calcium signals were monitored through an optical fiber implanted in the ventral striatum. After training, the calcium signals uh, showed ramping activity before receiving a reward. In the first experiment, we introduced three conditions, a long teleport, short teleport, and pausing at the same location. The value will show a step-like increase, whereas TD error will uh, exhibit a transient response. The magnitude of these responses will be larger for long uh, than te uh, short teleport. When the animal pauses for a short period, value will, will, will stay constant, whereas TD error may decrease back to the baseline since there is no change of value in time. Here is the result from 11 mice. This is the average of the standard condition. 
And here is the uh, response to short teleport. And here is the long teleport. The teleport was transient responses and the peak of the response will exceeded the standard condition. And this uh, directly violates the state value hypothesis in which the value should be always maximum just before reward. A pause caused the ramp to disappear and the signal dropped back to the baseline. And these results are consistent with the uh, reward prediction error and some results strongly violated the state value account. We next performed speed manipulations. Compared to the standard condition, the slow speed resulted in weaker ramps. And a faster speed resulted in a greater ramp. And these results are difficult to explain again by the value hypothesis, as it predicts that the value should be the same at the goal location. Instead, these results are consistent with the idea that the dopamine activity encodes TD error or the temporal derivative of a value function. What about spiking activities? A recent study proposed that slow dopamine signals may be independent of somatic spiking activities. To address this question, we recorded the spiking activity of optogenetically identified dopamine neurons in the VTA. Here is an example of a neuron. We observed a small but significant increase before reward, as evident from the denser spikes in the raster plot. This small ramp was observed also in the average population activity. At the glance, uh, this ramping appears to be very small compared to the ramp uh, ramping observed in axonal calcium signals. However, if we convolve this spiking activity with a slow kernel reflecting slowness of calcium signals, the appearance of uh, these signals became much closer to the axonal calcium signals. We then asked whether ramping and transient responses are observed within a single neuron as predicted by the model. Using fluorometry signals, it is difficult to exclude the possibility that there are separate populations that signal either ramps or transients. This is a neuron that showed ramping up spiking activity. And this is more, uh, more evident if the signal is convolved or predicted calcium signals. And this neuron showed transient excitation at the time of teleport. Although the population average ramped up, we also uh, found that some dopamine neurons uh, ramped down. Interestingly, these dopamine neurons that showed a negative ramp also showed a transient response in response to the teleport, a signature of reward prediction error. Therefore, regardless of whether the activity ramps up or down, single neuron activities were consistent with the reward prediction errors. It is interesting to note that these positive and negative ramps have been observed at the single neuron level in the previous imaging studies from the Witten lab. As I mentioned earlier, a positive ramp can result in a more convex value function. And similarly, a less convex value function can result in a TD error that ramps down, like, like this red. The derivative-like computation can uh, provide a unifying account on, on this type of diversity observed in uh, single neuron activities. These experiments show that the spiking activity ramps up and potentially explains ramping uh, signals observed in axonal calcium signals. The, re the reason for apparent discrepancy may be due to the di uh, difference in fast and slow measurements. If this was true, somatic calcium signals should also exhibit ramping signals. Indeed, calcium signals measured at the SOMA in the BTA uh, showed ramping signals consistent with TD errors. The TD errors are uh, the derivative of value. If so, the TD errors could be potentially converted back to the value by temporarily integrating TD errors for a long time scale. We next asked whether dopamine signals become closer to value than RPE, potentially due to its slowness. We used- And now I'd like to just chime in to say you've got about a minute or two left. Thanks. Thank you. 
Uh, so we uh, used a genetically encoded dopamine sensor, gravity A, generously provided by Yulon Li. The dopamine signals measured in this method were still more consistent with RPE. Uh, so this uh, conversion does not occur uh, even in the dop uh, dopamine dynamics. We next examined whether we can simplify the task. We use the horizontal bar that moves from the top to the bottom and we gave a water reward when the bar reached a certain position on the screen. Even in this task, uh, uh, which eliminated a navigational component, we observed a gradual ramp of dopamine responses. And the results were also consistent with TD error, very similar to a navigational context. One question that you may have at this point is whether the signal uh, that we observed are uh, just a sensory surprise. To address these questions, we performed telepods between two different tracks. In the middle of uh, running, the mouse was uh, uh, teleported from one track to the other, uh, other track uh, occasionally. If dopamine neurons respond to a sensory surprise or a sensory prediction error, we should see a response but we did not observe such a response. As a control, we also performed a forward teleport with the same animals, which evoked a big response as in the previous results. We also performed a backward teleport. Backward teleport causes a sensory surprise, but causes a decrease rather than an increase of value. If dopamine represents a pure sensory surprise, we should see a transient excitation similar to the forward teleport. However, the Karshi's signal rather decreased after a teleport, a backward teleport, likely reflecting a decre decrease in value. Finally, we changed the magnitude of reward in blocks of trials. The trials leading to big reward uh, uh, showed a stronger ramping and stronger teleport. Therefore, both the ramp and transient response were scaled by the value of upcoming reward. And these responses cannot be explained by a pure surprise. So in summary, ramping activities occur at all the stages of dopamine transmission from spikes at soma to dopamine concentrations at terminals. Ramping dopamine signals in the ventral striatum can be explained parsimoniously by temporal difference prediction errors. We also showed that dynamic sensory cues indicating reward proximity, including navigational stimuli or simple, uh, simple moving bar can cause ramping dopamine signals, highlighting the importance of sensory feedback that indicates transition over states. Whether these ideas can be extended to more wider conditions remains to be clarified in the future. However, we speculate that even in the absence of external cues, a sequence of actions that leads to reward can act as an internal cue for state transitions of the proximity to reward, which may in turn cause a dopamine response. Some of the dopamine responses observed during intern, uh, instrumental responding may be explained by this idea. Finally, dopamine neurons compute derivative-like prediction error signals on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. This moment-by-moment -moment, uh, computation of derivative-like signals is the hallmark of temporal difference error signals. To our knowledge, our experiment is the first empirical demonstration of this idea and unifies the computational interpretation of dopamine signals across time scales. These experimental results appear to re redefine relevant questions for the future. If dopamine ramps are temporal difference errors, the important questions are why dopamine ramp ramps up only in some tasks, what makes the value function more convex, and why prediction error does not converge to zero. Addressing these questions will really require further interplay between theory and experiment. Our results so far indicate the importance of sensory feedback. Our hypothesis is that state uncertainty plays a further important role, and we discuss these ideas in our, our preprint. Finally, our results indicate that there are interesting diversity within prediction errors. 
And these diversities may be just noise in the system, or alternatively, they might garner some computational advantages. Along this line, we have recently provided evidence that a certain type of diversity in reward prediction error signals supports distributional reinforcement learning, a new algorithm developed in AI. It is important to further explore these possibilities, and I'm happy to discuss these ideas uh, during this conference. Uh, I'd like to thank the people who actually did the work and Hyungu uh, Kim uh, spearheaded this project. He came up with clever experiments one after another, and it, it has been a real pleasure to see uh, how this project evolved. Asar Malik performed many electrophysiological experiments, and Paul Beck worked Hyungu uh, and Asar to help many experiments. And importantly, this is an ongoing uh, collaboration with Sam Gershman and his, his student, John Michael. And they made critical contributions in theoretical aspects. The dopamine sensor was provided by Euron Lee and his students. And Chris Harvey and Dimitri Aronoff helped uh, us set up uh, our virtual reality system. And the work is funded by the NIH Brain Initiative and the Simons Foundation. And thank you very much for your attention. Great, thank you now um, for a great talk. Um, we're a little behind, um, so I'm gonna hand this over to my co-mod for a few questions. Um, and go ahead, Ben. Okay, so we have time for maybe a couple of questions before we go on. Uh, the rest of the questions will be posted in the dedicated Slack channel for this session, so please go to Slack to further discuss these questions. Uh, the first question is from Christine Constantinople from NYU, and she says, hi now, how much does your model rely on the assumption that the value function is convex. Is that assumption based on data or some principal argument? I don't have an intuition for why the value function should have that shape. Yeah, that's a great question. And so um, I think that the only assumption that we made is, uh, is the uh, monotonically increasing value function. And actually the data will speak what the value function should be. So the convexity will ultimately be derived from the data. And this is one example of the, such an analysis. Uh, this is called fractional derivative analysis. And the derivative can be uh, different orders, the first order, second order, or even between zero and one. And in this case, we fit a model without assumption. And, and then uh, the, we found the value function that fit the model with some derivative between uh, zero and one. And the results show that the, uh, uh, the derivative is the very close to the first order, which supports RPE. If it's value, it should be zero order. But the derived value function, uh, which, which looks like pretty much like this, uh, can be derived from the data using this kind of method. Okay, thank you very much. The rest of the questions, we don't have time for more questions. The rest of them will be posted, as I said, in the Slack channel. Uh, ben? 